Hey, it's your boy, Sergeant Hooked on Heroes, here to discuss Common Rider Geats episode. Adjust my light, one second. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Eh? Wait, wait. There it is, hold on. There, no. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. <laughs> episode 41. Um, this is a pretty intense episode. Um, definitely a big KO focus, as you guys probably know, going into this. Of course, spoilers like every single time. Duh, it's a, re it's a review slash recap. Um, but just a pretty dang good episode overall. So, leading off of last week, we have uh, Ace and Neon talking about um, what happened to Sarah. So he finally reveals it to her. She's very upset, doesn't feel like it's real. She feels like he's, you know, this is one of your foxy, you know, fox tricks. Are you manipulating? Is this some kind of trick? And he says it's not. And she's really upset by this. And he says that Jamato are really a problem. This is why I created this new DGP was to wipe them out. And now they're becoming even more of a problem. Um, and she's really upset because she wants to be able to help. But she's lost her rider powers. And he's still so new to his creation god powers that he hasn't quite figured out yet how to like recreate ID cores for those that lost them when Buffa destroyed so many of them. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of the setup for the episode. Um, after not shortly, not long after this, we see uh, Jeet meeting up with Baraba and Kikara, who decide that they're going to still help and that they are just reveling in the misery that Kikara must be, or that uh, Kawa must be uh, feeling, and Michinaga, because he killed an innocent person and it wasn't what he wanted to do. Um, and uh, so they go off on their own to find their respective, you know, uh, contestants, if you will, people they're sponsoring. Um, to screw with them more. Um, Baraba finds Michinaka, who's seeing, like, basically glimpses of Sarah wherever he goes, little, like, you know, ethereal spirit of her kind of falling around and questioning every action he makes. And um, kind of it's a way to how he's just kind of mentally punishing himself for what he did. When you get to the core of Michinaka as a character, he's never struck me, or I don't think anybody who's intelligent enough watching the show as somebody who actually wants to cause harm to a person or kill them, especially with what happened to Toru. That kind of changed everything for him. And when we first introduced to him, it makes it seem as though he just wants to wipe out the other riders, doesn't care. But once he actually gets that power, he only uses it to stop them from being a rider. He didn't want to use that power to kill anybody because he knows what it felt like to have his friend ripped away from him by riders. And so I like what this is doing as like a dual character arc for both Kawa and Michinaga. Barrow, of course, breaks all this up that he's talking to the ghost of Sarah um, and just basically screwing with him, making fun of him, talking about how weak he is and that he probably liked it when he killed her and he said he didn't, but that somebody had to do something and he had no idea it was her and that he knows that she or somebody working with her is behind it and she, of course, is a little bitch and walks away and is like, hee 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 you know, like she always does. So Kekera finds Kewa. Kewa is distraught, has no idea what he's going to do. And he, he questions him. He's like, but I thought you were this honorable common writer. you got to keep saving the world. And he's like, I was doing it for her. I was wanting to save the world because I had the, you know, the backing or the, the you know, the motivation of her at my, you know, behind me. Because I was keeping safe. Now I have nobody. Everybody's gone. My parents are gone and Sarah. I failed. And so he's kind of turning his back on his morals a little bit. And I kind of like this for, for, for Kawa. Um, I do wish that this storyline happened, like, five or six episodes back a little bit so we can have some time to cook with it before we get to the end goal end game here um but i still like it overall so he tells him he, he gets all pissed and he like gets up and he knocks kaker over and kaker's like well you know you know someone that has the power to change this for you seek them out and so he suddenly remembers sumuri they know that sumuri is a burgeoning you know uh goddess of creation and that she helped bring ace back maybe there's some way that she can help him so we also get a really interesting scene where uh, Ace is trying to keep Samuri safe, so he's having her get a different, like wear like different clothes or whatever than her DGP stuff, so she's unrecognizable. And Jeet still finds them, and he asks him to come outside with them. He, Jeet's very weird; he's very like, "Yeah, come on, I'll come out here. We're gonna beat your ass." Not a belt at all, just straight hands. So we get a lot of unarmed fights with him. Uh, he fights Geats for a while, and then in comes Punk Jack to help for a little bit. He kind of kicks both their butts before, of course, Kawa shows up out of nowhere. And take Samuri away and so I'll keep you safe. You know, you guys handle him. I'll take, you know, Samuri away. And they're like, okay. They kind of just go with it because they have no reason to distrust K1. Especially what he's going through. They don't know kind of the dark turn that's going to happen for him. And so he runs away with her. And Jeep basically just kind of says, you know, be careful. You may think that you're the only one who can, 
you know, being a creation God that can shape the world here, but someone may come around, you know, come along with a stronger desire that may be able to oppose you. So I don't know if that's supposed to be insinuating him or someone like villain wise that's coming after him, or if that's supposed to be like our lead into the movie, wherever that's supposed to be set. Because you remember with Revice last year, the Revice um, uh, Battle Familia movie technically takes place within the show. Um, they led up to it and then afterwards talked about it, you know, once the movie had come out, the episodes that came out the week after the movie came out led off of that and kind of talked about what happened in the movie. So I wonder if that's maybe what they're doing here a little bit. If they are, then they need to be a tiny bit more heavy handed to show that he's talking about um, Cross Geats or whatever it is, the dark version of Geats 9 or whatever. But regardless, I still like G. I think he's interesting. We're not going to have a whole lot of time to really delve into his character. But most of the DGP staff has kind of been just your basic villain stuff that we see in a lot of Rider seasons while we still instead focus on the main characters. There's been some interesting villains, but not the DGP staff people, in my opinion. Um, so uh, that happens. Uh, we also get a scene with Neon going to talk to her dad, Time Fire, um, and begging him if there's any way that he can help restore her as a Rider. He, of course, refuses, tells her that he can't, and that he, she's his only way he, she can, that he can get out. And she basically refuses and said that, you know, this is, this is clearly, you know, what happens to somebody when they're completely out of love. So I find that really interesting, too. A nice little back and forth character beat for them. Um, finally get back to Kawa, though. And Kawa is uh, um, talking to uh, Sumari and begs her for any way at all that she can help him. So she prays and she creates something that we don't see right at the very, that very moment. We also go to scene with Daichi, where he's trying to speak to the masses, telling them the Jamato are a threat, and I can save you, be my disciple, blah, 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 blah. And just basically as bait to get people to join him, he releases a bunch of Jamato spores, turns people into some Jamato, and Michinaga comes in to defeat some of them, but one of the guys turns into one of the stage two ones that will die if they're defeated, right? So he accidentally kills another person, has no idea. And when he's confronted by it, by Sarah's spirit, um, and by Kawa, he tells both of them, like, I, I, I don't know what else to do. Somebody, you know, I don't want to end somebody's life, but somebody has to do something to keep the people safe. I can't just sit here and do nothing. Which is juxtaposed to Geet's earlier episode. Similarly, someone comes at him that was infected, and uh, he decides to leave him alone, which is also kind of dangerous, just leaving a Jamato to walk around and do whatever they want. Um, but I like the difference in their paths and how they're doing things, where Michinaga is more aggressive, you know, shoot first, ask questions later, whereas Geet says thinking it through and trying to figure out if there's a way to reverse things. We also see with Daiji, when he gives his message to the people and whatever, that's the people that he have, have died so far from, uh, you know, being a parasite Jamato and, you know, dying afterwards, become like part of a tree of some kind, and that's where he's gaining the knowledge of humanity. That's his goal at the end of it, is to turn everyone into Jamato, be connected to those Jamato, and then gain their knowledge like he was trying to before. It's a bit of a giant kind of leap for him because he never had much interest in the Jamato. I wish they would have led into that a bit more with him having like a bit more of a sick interest in it. Um, but I'm, I, it's fine. He's probably going to get wiped out next episode, and I'll tell you why. So Kayla finally converts to Michinaga. He killed another innocent person. And he says, wow, I'm just getting used to it, huh? Because my sister wasn't enough, right? And he, you know, trying to defend himself and everything, and Kayla's just not having it. They straight throw hands, beating each other's ass, really Kayla winning, honestly. And Kayla pulls out a new buckle, Bujin sword. Um, and we get the henshin. And the whole little <coughs> henshin. He does the different henshin pose with it. Um, I guess it's like Tokyo Ghoul reference or something like that. I've never watched that anime, but I've heard it's good. Um, I really like Bujin sword uh, tycoon. I really do. I, I, I love that. Again, with a final form buckle like Gates 9, how at the end it says, Ready, fight! With his, it sounds more sinister. It's like, ready, fight. And it says, set, avenge. Like when he sets the buckle. That's cool. I like how they're like messing a little bit with what the desire driver does. Showing that when someone has more of a darker side to them, it warps the driver and makes it speak differently just because of the power of that buckle being more dark oriented, if you will, or more evil. Um, but the form is fucking immaculate. I do not give a flying hell that it is a kit bash upon a kit bash upon a kit bash. I do not care. It looks beautiful. I wish he was always a samurai gimmick from the very beginning. I like I like Ninja Buckle, but the samurai stuff looks amazing with Tycoon. I also love how the buckle in the center has a different version, like a more sinister looking version of the raccoon, you know, Tycoon ID core. Similar to how Geats has the Geats 9 has this little fox head thingy here in the front covering up the ID core. 
similar concept. I really like that. I think that's really cool. Um, but it's a really awesome fight. He tries. He fights Mijunaga. He tries to defend himself. Mijunaga does. Getting his ass beat all over. A bunch of different awesome sword attacks. He's spinning the sword around. Fucking creating the moon. And all this crazy shit. And then he just at the end of it straight stabs Mijunaga right in the stomach. And we end the episode right there. <laughs> um, this was a pretty intense episode. Overall I really enjoyed it. I think there were some great character moments. I love that this is like a dual arc for both buffa and kawa clearly buffa is not dead from this because he still has to get his final final form but also because we see him in the episode preview using uh command twin command buckle so we also see finally uh uh baraba and kakura using the queen and king jamato or whatever they are uh bu- not buckle uh cards the black cards or whatever so they can do their different forms with that um so i'm really happy about that seeing what that is and i like it. it's more jamato um, influence than it is anything else and that's really cool because although Baraba was always on the side of the Jamato kind of she never was never struck me as somebody who truly loved them or wanted to be infected by them and be part of it it was just like a means to an end so it's cool to see that too um, but I do like this start of this darker arc here with KY he seems to be on the path of maybe even helping Jeet make Sumeri into a goddess of creation in the hopes that he can wish his sister back to life I don't know We'll have to see here what, what we do going forward here. But it's a pretty interesting pathway to the end here. We only have, I think, 50 episodes, I would assume. Maybe there's more than that. Um, and we still, like I said, have to get uh, Buffa's buckle, so the Mao uh, Buffa thing going on for his final form. We still have to get Nago's new ID core and the fantasy buckle for her, along with somehow Seeker being a part of things, maybe, as far as the leaks talk about. Um, so there's a few more little things to do here story-wise before the end. I think we have a decent amount of time. Um, I don't think this is nearly as out of left field and awful as some of the end things they did in Revice. I think that kind of just like fell apart in pacing. Whereas this, I wish there was a few more episodes, but I'm really enjoying where they're going. So I'm giving it a little more slack. I don't know why. I just kind of am digging the series. Um, but let me know what you guys thought of episode 41 of Geats. Uh, did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you in the middle? What was your favorite moment? What do you think of bujin sword uh tycoon i fucking love it but you don't have to but i think it's cool i think it's a badass form i'm really mad it's p bandai um thank you so much for the love the comments the sharing the liking subscribing all that it really means a lot to me really really does um we're just shy of 500 subs love to see this hit there but if we don't that's fine too because i just love doing what i do here um, as far as content this week, that'll probably be the main review for the week. I might do something else content-wise. Um, but next week will be another episode for the Hengens and Homies podcast as of recording this episode. Um, so stay tuned on that and what the topics will be. Follow us on our social medias at Red Red, at Toku Frankie, Frankie Toku, and the Hengens and Homies podcast uh, tweet, uh, Twitter account as well. But anyway, until next time, stay hooked on them heroes. I'll talk to you later, and I'm probably going to do more of a secret invasion. Maybe I'll do another thing about that. But anyway, bye-bye.